Welcome to our new tutorials from the Hereford Etsy team and we're presenting Selling on Etsy and this first one is an introduction to what we will be doing over the next few weeks. Thank you. Hi there everybody, welcome to my channel SH Millinery and this introduction video which we're going to be talking about actually selling on Etsy. Um, and I'm going to introduce myself and talk a bit, little bit about it. Although this is an introduction to selling, it's the first in a series of tutorials which will take you through the processes to build a successful online business. But firstly, I want to tell you a little bit about me and what will be coming up. Now, my name's Sarah, spelt Sarah, which is somewhat confusing to some people. Coming up 63 years of age, so I'm a mother, a grandmother, and I've been the Hereford UK Etsy team captain for three years now, and I've loved every minute of it. And my credentials are that I've been in sales almost my entire working life in one form or another, and I've run large sales teams. I currently run three Etsy shops. One is my main business, which is millinery. You may see a few hats dotted about in my studio. Another is my hobby, which is all the things I like to sew that have nothing to do with hats. And um, one of my shops is to declutter all my vintage collection, which I've amassed over a long time, mostly sewing ephemera. And at the current time, well, are we May the 2nd or 3rd? I can't remember. As with most of the world, I'm in lockdown and making the most of my time, hence these tutorials, which I'm going to take you through. And normally I would run these as um, an in-person tutorial, either in a group workshop or as a one-to-one, -one, but these are now going to be online for you all to see. Now, these tutorials are not designed to be, oh, wow, show me how to make a million pounds from Etsy. That's not, that's not my style. But this, these tutorials are more, how can I feel my business is on the right track? Am I heading in the right direction to make a successful business? Am I, am I going about this the right way? So they're designed to be factual, not gimmicky. Although you might get some laughs along the way, because especially with me running them, I have a tendency to drop things, muck up things, so you never know. And this first video is really just um, covering the basics of setting up, planning a strategy, a brief overlook of setting up an Etsy shop. And then the next videos will cover subjects such as photography, product line, USP, unique selling point, social media, marketing, and we'll be covering upselling and promoing and having a bread and butter line, which is one of my favourite phrases. We'll also be doing SEO, search engine optimization and ranking, planning and future proofing, and we'll also cover selling in person at fairs and markets, etc. So there's going to be plenty of info coming up. So I sub suggest you subscribe to the channel and you'll get a notification every time my latest video comes up. Now, like most businesses, the old adage of you have to speculate to accumulate is so true. But by this, I don't mean in monetary terms. I mean in time and effort. If you can't spend at least a couple of hours a day on your business, it will just be a hobby and it won't grow like you probably want it to. It is hard work running your own business with any business, especially as most Etsy sellers are doing it on their own. You'll be your own product designer, your own manufacturer, your own quality control, your own photographer, your own marketing manager, accounts manager, poster and person, customer service, so much more. So. There is a lot to it and it's hard work, but if I haven't put you off so far, let's begin. <laughs> so you've got your product, you've made, you've made your product, you've designed it, you've made it, and you hope people will love it. Now we all get a bit of the imposter syndrome at this point. We think, oh, I love it, my friends love it, my family love it, but will anyone buy it? Yes, of course they will. 
if other people love it they'll love it but you've got to put your product out there properly and you've got to do it in a certain way you've got to have strategies now online is the world's biggest sales market now and especially with lockdown and the pandemic on it means that everyone is buying online the shops aren't open now of course that means the competition is very high and currently on Etsy there are over 49 million items for sale now if you add the items that are sold on other sites such as Amazon and eBay you've got a lot of sellers out there so you've really got to get seen now, setting up a shop on Etsy is, is relatively easy, but you've got to make it stand out from the crowd to, to combat the fact that there are so many people out there. But you've got to think of your online shop in a very similar way as if you had a brick and mortar shop, as if you had a shop on the high street. You've got to think, when you go to a shop, say on the high street, firstly, would you go in? Does it look enticing? Would you would you go in and buy anything? Does the shop front look good? Does the display look good? Does the product look like something you would be interested in? Is there plenty of info on the price tags? And also, if you were going into a brick and mortar shop, there would be a sales assistant to help you and to answer any questions and to provide a customer service. Now, you've got to do all that, but online without actually being there, without actually seeing your customer and speaking to them person to person. So you've got to have your shop looking good. You've got to have a banner. You've got to have a profile. You've got to have info about you and your product. Remember, people like to know about you. They want to know who they're buying from. Do they think you're trustworthy? Do you, do you come across as someone they'd be interested in buying from? Does your product look like it's high quality, well made? All these things you've got to get across just from someone's phone or tablet or PC. So everything has to be displayed well. Your photography has to be excellent from all angles and you've got to have uh, concise descriptions, good quality descriptions. Now we're going to be covering all of these things in a lot more depth as the days go on, but this is just to give you an indication of how we're going to progress further on with the tutorials. You've also got to do things like comply with the laws of the land. Now Distance selling regulations, you can find all the details online, but here in the UK, a customer has can return anything within 30 days for any reason at all. If they don't like it, if it didn't fit, if they've changed their mind, those are the rules in the UK. But you must say in your um, shop policies that it's a 30 day return policy. They must contact you within 14 days and return it within 30. Because if you don't have a policy in place, they can return it up to a year later and demand a full refund and they'll be within their legal rights. So get your policies in place. Now, of course, understandably, if something comes back damaged, worn, whatever, you don't have to give a full refund. You can make your own decisions on what you do refund or whether you refund at all but you must have a refund policy in place. Now, every country is different. For example, the US doesn't have that policy. So wherever you are in the world, you've got to make sure of the regulations and rules for your country. So that's just one of the things I should thought I should cover. Now, again, in the UK, if an item is custom made, a custom order comes through Etsy, that can't be returned. But that isn't the same. Custom made isn't the same as made to order. So it's, if you have a photograph up, say, of a handbag and you say it's made to order and the customer gets in touch and says, yes, I'd like one of those. And you say, well, it'll be ready in 30 days and I'll send it out. That isn't the same as a custom order. If the customer comes to you and says, I'd like that bag, but I'd like it in a different colour with a different handle, that is a custom order. So there's a lot of things to take on board 
when you're selling online and again that does add a bit to your not to your workload but to your thinking forward branding this is a big thing it's good to have a consistent brand across every aspect of what you do with your business not only does it give your customer confidence in you and your product they they see the same across the board whether they're looking at your product on etsy or whether they're looking at it on facebook whatever but it makes your business more recognizable and easily found so if possible and sometimes this isn't possible because you can't do it or you've already chosen a name try to have a business name that conveys what you do or what you sell and check if that name is free across the me all media so for example my main shop is sh millinery i make millinery i make hats so it's just my initials of millinery it tells everybody what i do and when i set up the shop i also checked i could have that name on instagram and i could have that name on facebook so Again, I'm consistent across the board and I try and keep my fonts the same and my colour schemes the same across the board. Uh, for some brands, you, you, they're instantly recognisable. If you go onto the high street, you know as soon as you see something, you look at Nike, you know it's Nike because of the branding. And you've got to do that in a small way with your own shop and your own product. And if you're, the name of your shop is a peculiar spelling or it's a very lengthy name where people might not remember it, you've got to do even more to apply the branding principles and keep things consistent so that people can find you. So that if they can't remember your name, they know that you sell this or your banner does that or whatever. So bear that in mind. So banner pictures are what we're going to be talking about further on in the tutorial. So how to how to set them up. Now, I know not everybody is a, a marvellous photographer and not everybody is very techie and can do loads of stuff on on a computer. So I try and bear that in mind whenever I'm uh, doing any workshops or tutorials with everyone because everyone's not in the same boat. Now, the main thing after sort of talking about your shop front and your banner and your profile pic, etc., is your photographs of your product. They are your main selling attribute. So they have to be good. They don't have to be professional and you don't need a fancy camera. I just use my phone. I use my phone for everything. My poor phone is about 10 years old and it's still going well. So um, when I go into the photography tutorial, I'll be going into depth how to use free apps to improve your photographs, how to make a cheap and easy light box, and how to set up your photographs so that you get a good image. Now we're going to be talking about that really in depth because as I say, photographs are the main thing. You'll see from this picture that is coming up now, the Etsy buyers, that is their main concern, does it look good and that's the same for anybody you buy something because it looks good whenever you go online for to search for something if the picture stands out and you think yep yeah, that's what i want it looks great you're going to buy it now price uh, and other aspects come into it of course and of course it's funny actually because reviews come way down in this list but that's partly because a maximum of 25% of customers will leave a review. But the majority don't. There are a lot of people who can't be asked to leave a review for anything. So you will only get a very small amount of reviews. So you want to make sure that they are ace when you do get them. But don't worry too much at this point about reviews, especially if you're new and you're fretting, you've sold three things, but nobody's left a review. You might not get a review until you've sold 40 things. So don't worry about that at this point. Now, when I talk about photographs, 
on Etsy, you can have up to 10 images of any item that you're selling. You don't have to use all 10. There's nothing that you don't have to think, oh, I can't think of another way of photographing that. But the more you can have, the better. And we will be talking about things like showing scale because in the photography video, because often you look at something and you think, well, how big is it or how small is it? And you need to show the back and the front and all sorts of things. So we'll be going into that in depth. And if you can get 10 pictures up, that's great. Sometimes people say, well, I want even more than 10. So then you would do, have to do a collage for some of your images. So again, we'll, we'll talk about that. Then your titles have to be good. The five first five words in your title are the most important because they're going to be what someone is going to type in the search engine. Uh, you think about it yourself when you're searching for something. So, for example, say you were selling, I don't know, an acrylic painting of the countryside in Hereford. Don't give it your own name. Don't call it Surprise Brightly or Sunrise Over Meadows or anything like that because nobody knows it's called that. So they're not going to search for it. I mean, if I gave my hat a name, Camilla, who would know it's called Camilla? They wouldn't put that in a search engine. So your first five words should be more like, um, let's think, off the top of my head, landscape painting, Hereford countryside, green trees, acrylic artwork on board, Made in UK. Made in UK is one of the highest search for terms and more and more people are selling local, which I'll talk about in a moment. So think carefully about your titles. Put commas between things. Um, and that title, you should have those, those important pieces in your main description, plus the size, of course. So you can put that in a title, so it's 18 inches by 36. Always good to put centimetres and inches because, remember, again, you're selling worldwide. So your main description should then follow on, but it shouldn't waffle on. There's no point in filling your description up with how you were out on the river bank with your picnic and you thought this was the ideal thing to paint. People don't want to know that. I mean, if I go to B&Q and want to buy a lawnmower, I want to know all about the lawnmower. I want to know what power it is. Is it electric? How big is it? Blah, blah, blah. And that's what people, they're still going to want to know the, the information, the basic information when they're shopping as well. I'm very unlike a lot of sellers and I limit my description to about five lines. Because also, when you're on a mobile phone or anything shopping, by the time it says read more, people have got bored. They either want it or they don't want it. So you're only going to get normally the first few lines of the description. Your tags, they should all be filled in. You're allowed 13 tags and they should all be filled in. Uh, and we will really be going into depth over that because if you're selling, say, accessories, you'll have already put your item under the accessories uh, heading. So you don't need to put accessories again in your tags because it's already going to come up automatically and I'll be showing you examples. Your location should be set. More and more people like to buy local or at least from their own country. So I'm, I'm using an image of my own shop here to show you that it says that I'm local. And this is an image of one of my items with the title. So again, you'll see what I mean about the title. And again, funny enough, they've now started to put this shop is local to you. So again, a great way of promoting your own area and getting custom in your own area. And the nice thing about that is, although, for example, I, I sell hats, so they're event item and only 24% of the population I think ever wear a hat mostly for births, deaths, marriages but once someone finds me and has a hat they often come to my studio then to have a custom made hat so I get more business that way 
you should also, I emphasise this time and time again, but you should also be constantly looking at your online competition. You need to search for your product. Where do you come up? Do you come up on page five or do you come up on page 500? That'd be your ranking. Now, you want to be coming up in the first four or five pages, if not page one or two, because again people get fed up they get overload by the time they get further on down it's a bit like when you go in a restaurant and the menu has 40 things on like oh, i'm there for ages can't make my mind up so you need to get yourself near the top ranking so look at other competitors what are their photographs like what are their descriptions like what are their tags like how much have they sold now, take it as well with a bit of a pinch of salt because a lot of very good Etsy sellers drive a lot of traffic to their shop, which we'll be talking about again in a later video marketing. So you might think, well, I don't think their tags are all that good or their title wasn't all that good. But if they're driving massive amounts of traffic to their shop through other means, they will still come up in the highest ranking because they sell the most. So again, but it is really worth looking at your own, looking at competition. I'm always looking at other people's hats. What are they doing? What are they selling? How much are they selling it for? So look at all of that and, and see what you think. It's worth doing that every now and again, looking at your competition and also searching for your own shop and searching for your own products. For example, I sell a lot of baby blue fascinators in the wedding season well I did up until this year <laughs> but if I put in baby blue fascinator I should be on page one now you'll all be checking won't you but I should be on page one so you want to want to do that if I'm not on page one let me know above all remember that Etsy are only hosting your product you will be the one to drive traffic to your shop. They've got your product on there and they will drive uh, traffic to it for a cost. They'll advertise for you at a cost. But it's going to be up to you to get people to find your shop and buy your product. You can't expect Etsy to do it, not with 49 million products online. People go, oh, I've opened my shop and, uh, and no one's looked at it. And I say, well, have you talked about it on Facebook or have you put it on Pinterest or have you got it on Instagram or have you tweeted about it and they go no well no one knows they're there so we are really going to be hitting that hard in the next few tutorials you've got to be on top of your shop all the time you've got to be looking you've got to be changing say something's not selling very well is it the tags aren't right is it the description isn't right is it that you need to change the pictures? Now also, when the uh, bots and crawlers are looking through the web, through Google, etc., for new products, if you alter a product slightly, they think it's new, it's something fresh, so they reboost it. So again, you should be looking all the time to tweak your shop. On another matter, I can highly recommend that you make contact with other sellers in your area because it can be a lonely business working on your own, especially if it's going to be your main job. So either join your local Etsy team. I mean, we have a fabulous team, absolutely fabulous. Um, and we have our own website. So this is the address of it here. So you can look at us <laughs> in all our glory. Our own website also drives traffic to um, Etsy. We also, um, when things are better in the world, we also talk about all the events we're doing, all the workshops we're doing, etc., etc. And by being part of a team or, or any other creative group, you could even just search for sellers in your area. You could look on Etsy and say, hi, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm down the road from you. Do you fancy getting together? Are you interested? Because not only is it ideal for getting um, collaboration on the go or suggestions or bouncing ideas off it, 
it's also good for your mental state because we we have uh, jollies we go out at christmas and drink lots of cocktails and have a laugh and we meet up in the summer and we have barbecues and go to the pub and we end up talking business a lot but it's a great way of socializing as well so don't feel you're on your own if you belong to a team or if you belong to our team the herifidetsi team you can always ask me questions so i'm i'm always happy to help and open to having a chin wag there's too many allegories in this thing but try and think outside the box as well think like a buyer don't think like a seller you'll get a better feel for your product if you think like a buyer or ask other people's opinion. Say, what would you search for if you were going to buy this? What would you put in the search box in Google or Etsy? What, what would you think about the size, the colour, etc.? You've got to think constantly about the other side of the box, not you and how you feel about the product, but how other people feel. Now I'm going to keep this one fairly short because I've waffled on and it's not very interactive, this one. So what I would say is subscribe to the channel. The next one will be photography and that will be really in depth going into a lot about the photography. But before we finish, I would say take a good look at your shop. Decide what needs the most work first. Don't go, oh, that needs work and that and that and that. Just concentrate on one thing. It can be do, too daunting, too stressful to do too many things. So if you think, well, my photos could do with tweaking. Don't worry about anything else. Just concentrate on that. So until next time, I hope to see you again. I hope you found this helpful and interesting. If you've got any questions, do leave them in the comments. I look all the time to see what people are saying about me hopefully nice things but if they're not i'll take it on the gym and uh, i look forward to speaking to you soon bye have a good day